Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Well, today is the very first video of the 300 gallon after doing the complete overhaul and removing over 20 colonies from this setup. And as you can see, it looks the same. I'm just kidding. This is an old video from January. This is what the reef tank looks like right now. And yeah, definitely some big changes. And in this video, I'm going to go through each rock structure, talk about everything that I did with the tank, what I removed, the reason behind it. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things I ran into during the process that kind of forced me to remove a lot more coral than I anticipated. And then towards the end of the video, you guys will see the whole time lapse of removing the coral from the middle right rock structure, which was a huge pain, but it's finally done. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, let's go and look at the left rock structure first. And as you can see, there's not really much has changed unless you were kind of keen or looking in or looking at specific colonies closely. And uh, I ended up removing the bird's nest that was right here underneath this uh, poison ivy. It was getting shaded out, plus it got kind of got damaged during the whole dremeling process. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so I removed a colony that was here, pretty big bird's nest. And I removed the exact same colony that was actually over here underneath uh, some of these acros and then I went ahead and shaved off uh, some of the dead red planet that was right here. It's still a little bit left but I got the, the majority of it out and uh, the reason why I removed both of those again was because of the shaving from the Dremel tool. I had to go through the rock structures and use a Dremel tool like I did previously with other colonies to get them off these off the uh, rock structure. There was just a huge problem with that and uh, finally I finally, get, I finally did it, went through, and it, it took days and days and days, but I finally got through and did it. But the problem was there was so much in the water column, even with bubble scrubbing, that a lot of the SPS were just not liking it. And unfortunately, those two colonies were not doing very well, so I just removed them. And it wasn't not really a big deal. It's not something I really wanted to grow in there, but it still sucks that I had to remove them. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this rock structure. Um, I did end up losing a head of my torch here. That was because, again, of the Dremel tools, the particles in the water column. Uh, the head itself actually started eating some pieces of dead coral that were floating around, and unfortunately it just killed the head off. So I removed that. It's uh, definitely noticeable, but it's okay. It'll be all right. It'll fill back in eventually. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the left rock structure. Let's go and move over to the middle left, which has a ton of stuff missing. Now, where to start on this? So I removed the WWC, which was the big one that was taking over all this space here. And as I was removing that, I finally could see how much damage that coral was actually doing. Uh, the Fish of Hex Rainbow shelving acro that was right here was getting completely destroyed by that WWC. And then some of the this uh, uh, green uh, staghorn here with the purple tips, you can see there's a lot of dead pieces. It's actually a piece of the WWC still sticking to the coral right there. But there's a lot of that that is dead. And the reason for that is that WWC was overgrowing everything. It was crushing every coral on this rock structure. Not only was it shading everything else below, but everything that was even up here was getting uh, killed off. So when I was removing that WWC, I could really see the damage that was going down with all the corals up here. And unfortunately that Fish of Hex um, rainbow uh, shelving acro was dead. It was dead in a matter of days once I finally removed that WWC. So would it have died if I didn't remove the WWC? Eventually, yes. So I just kind of sped up the process unfortunately and once it started stning slow tissue necrosis it was it it was done it was done within a couple days so yeah that's that kind of sucks that was a big seller on the website but unfortunately that's just kind of nature does its thing and uh you can see here that there's a lot of this uh, montipore that's missing you see these blank spots that's where i went in there with the dremel and actually uh did a lot of buzzing because it was growing up over onto this uh uh, crown of glory it was growing up onto it. and a lot of that coral is dying or going or dead pretty much because of that so i will have to go in there later and finish dremeling that but i just i had too much going on with the tank and i i just i could only uh dremel so much without causing too much stress so removed what i could i will have to get in there and finish that off and i will also have to keep up on that because it's never all going to go away and that's something that i learned is putting encrusting montipora on a rock structure where you have acropora bad idea never will do that again and, and with this tank, I learned a lot of lessons on coral placement, I'll tell you that, and uh, I will not be making those mistakes again. So, yeah, it just sucks that I had to learn the hard way, but that's pretty much how this hobby is, as you guys know. But anyway, I replaced a lot of coral on this rock structure. Uh, we got some uh, Orange Passion, WW, uh, sorry, Orange Passion, Walt, um, Walt Disney. Um, I'll have to get you guys the names of the rest of these. I have, I have them on my desk over there, but I'm not walking over and grabbing a piece of paper. Uh, they're all higher-end acros. 
and they're kind of their placement is based on how they grow. We got some shelving acros that are going to shelve over instead of over colonies. So they're going to be able to kind of work their way out, so I don't have to worry about it uh, causing issues with shading. And then uh, yeah, well, so we'll see. They're all frags. They're all biddies. See over here, we just have little bitties, and they'll turn into something eventually. And uh, yeah, so I did actually end up replacing some of the WWC here. Put a little bit in the bottom. You can see the yellow tips are just starting to come in. And uh, that's something it did not have when it was way up here. And this guy's about to come out of the water too. So overall, this rock structure took a really big hit. Not as much as the one to the uh, right-hand side. But overall, I removed a lot of coral from this rock structure. So we'll see what it turns into. Um, we got a lot of new acros that you probably didn't notice. They're all on there, and we'll kind of see what it turns into here in the future. So moving over to the middle right rock structure, this one was a huge pain. Um, yeah, <laughs> where to start? So from the top here, my apple berry, I had a huge, huge colony of this guy. Snapped that off when I was breaking off the Stylophora. And speaking of the Stylophora, that used to be all right here. You guys couldn't even see the $500 F-Low. This is the first time you guys have seen it pretty much ever. Um, that... That colony is starting to actually grow really well now that it's getting some space and it's not touching the style of four anymore but yeah the style was a huge pain the uh the skeletal structure was i don't know like this thick it was disgustingly huge and uh i couldn't get it with bone cutters you guys will see in the video that i did as much as i could and i had to go in there with the dremel it took me two days alone to knock out that one colony with the dremel tool um, i ended up breaking off the bottom of this rock structure and i had to put another piece of uh, rubble in between and super glue it to kind of hold it it's not completely broken off but it's really loose you guys will see that in the video so i put the piece of rock there to kind of bridge the gap to give a little bit more stability uh huge pain huge pain that colony turned into well i made a whole bunch of colonies throughout the, the system here to grow out but there's a ton of frags been selling a lot of that stuff and uh, they're pretty decent as well. So I got a lot of coral from that one colony. And again, I replaced it with higher end acros. We got some shelvings, of course, that are out here. So we'll see what that turns into in the future. Um, you know, six months or so, we'll, I mean, the tank's going to do its own thing. So we'll see what it turns into. Hopefully it will look pretty good. Right now, it's just bare. It, it just, maybe not to you guys, but to me, it just seems like really bare. Not, uh, not liking it at all. But uh, so this rock structure actually had a lot of coral on it that I didn't know that were a problem. So this, um, the heck is a uh, shit pink lemonade. This is that's what this is here. This thing hasn't had polyp extension in about six months, and I couldn't figure out why. It's just starting to get it back. It's because I had an enchinata or something. I'll show you guys what it was. This LPS, all right. This guy, well, I forgot it was even here. I had it on the middle of the rock structure, and the sweeper tentacles were actually touching the base of that um pink lemonade and it just never opened up it was completely stressed out wasn't growing wasn't doing anything since i removed it just a few weeks ago i'm starting to get new growth better polyp extension so that coral will hopefully come back but i didn't even realize that 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 enchilada i believe that's what it is was even there for the first in the for one and then it was taking out all the corals through here it was killing off the uh, Satosa, which I removed as well. Some green Digitata that was getting hit by it. Removed that. Some red Digi. I mean, there was a ton of stuff that was getting destroyed by it. So I went in there with the bone cutters, got out what I could, and then went through with the Dremel tool and got the rest out. Um, huge mess. I, I mean, you don't even realize what you have in the tank until you start digging in and really looking in there. Like, I have a bunch, whole bunch of media shower growing up the whole side of this. Don't even, didn't even know it was there. Same thing over here. A whole bunch of media shower. Just, you know, oblivious that it's even growing in there. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the middle right rock structure. It sucked. The whole process was awful. Uh, the tank, ugh, it just didn't like it. It was it was a huge pain. I would not do it again. Um, I mean, I would if I had to, but I, no, it was awful. Uh, moving over to the last rock structure here, the right one. I removed the uh, like sea fan that used to be here, replaced it with the uh, pinky and the bear. Uh, that was pretty much it for the only acro. Uh, that's about it. I trimmed up some other stuff. Um, put a lavelli through here. I fragged that from my other system and just did some general trimming. The uh, wolverine's coming in now that it's getting some light with the Cali Tort. There's finally some room. Cutting back a whole bunch of this Gorgonian, selling a lot of that stuff. So I'm glad you guys are purchasing it. I can cut it back, make some more room. But uh, yeah, what a huge pain. System overall is doing pretty good. Uh, for the first couple weeks, it was not happy. Um, major fluctuations in alkalinity, of course, nutrients. Um, I went through and did water changes, removed a lot of the detritus. This is what's kind of left. Um, and I guess we could talk about that and flow and everything. Uh, just was not happy for the longest time. 
I actually went through and traded some coral for some Jabo powerheads. Not quite sure what they are. Uh, they're O oh, something, OW something, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it didn't really uh, cost me anything. I just traded some coral for them. They were slightly used. The guy went to something else. So I was like, hey, I'll take them just for the sake of taking them. Um, I would not buy them new. You guys know that I'm not the biggest fan of J-Bow Powerheads, but I figured, hey, uh, they're practically free. Might as well give them a shot and see what they do. And I uh, moved the Nero 5 to the back wall over here and a Nero 5 over here. Took the other two, moved them throughout other systems in the fish room, which you guys see here, here in a minute. But, uh, yeah, I uh, try the Powerheads, see if I like them. Um, they are adding additional flow that's about uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. About 40,000 plus uh, gallons per hour in the system. They're all on random flow or reef crest te technically, and they're all doing their own thing. So it's pretty good. Get a little bit better polyp extension with the additional flow. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be trying out some new power heads here in the future just because I know that the Jables are probably going to take a shit. So I'm going to have to try something else. So we'll see. Uh, Nero 5s are good. They're just not good enough for a tank this size. They do work, but they're just not enough flow for what I'm looking for, at least not for my particular system. But uh, yeah, so when it comes to the rest of the tanks, I guess we can look at everything here. The 40 gallon, doing pretty good as you guys can see, it's definitely some growth. Uh, this is one of my main cutting tanks now. I, I know I said I was gonna let it grow out, but you know I say a lot of things and I do other stuff, that's story of my life. I've actually been cutting a lot of coral from this tank to keep up with the uh, cut to order stuff. Um, cut back a lot of this green digitata and I'm finally getting some color back on my, um, oh boy. I don't remember the heck of it. It's the one I just removed from the tank over there. Forgive me. But um, it, I'll, pr it'll probably come to me while I'm talking about other, other stuff. So if I ble blurt out a, a random name, you guys know I'm getting get him to. Um, but yeah, this is one of my main cutting tanks. I got a lot of LPS down here that are growing out. A lot of these acros are doing very well, plus the SPS. ton of uh, red Monty in here, as you guys can see. Or orange to you, but it's definitely red uh, to me. The, uh, the tank's doing pretty good. I like it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much to say about that. Of course, we have the Healing and WYSIWYG tank. A lot of Coraline algae growing in here. It's doing pretty good. Quite a few uh, frags healing. Got to get around to cutting some more, that's for sure. The other grow out tank here, we have a lot of red Monty left. Of course, all the other SPS that I removed from the 300, doing pretty good. And then we have our Acropora grow out and our cut to order frag racks. So these are all corals that are cut to order that are healing. It'll be going out later this week or next week. And then um, I got a couple more racks. I got to start filling. I got some more orders that came in. So I got to take care of those today. But uh, yeah, this tank is doing pretty good. One of the best tanks I have, even though they're all connected, this is the only one I have no problems, have no algae issues, no dino issues, no pro no no nothing. Perfectly fine. Always looks good. Always works good. And uh, yeah, I just wish all of them were like that. This tank, on the other hand, gets dino every once in a while. Not sure why. It hasn't popped up in a little bit. But this is the only tank that ever gets dino for whatever reason. And uh, this one is... The disaster that it is now but the other two seem to be fine no dino no other problems but uh, yeah so that is the update on the 300 gallon and uh, I know I rambled for a while what are we like 13 14 minutes in on this part but uh, yeah it's it, it is what it is I guess I, guess I can leave it at that it is what it is it's uh, definitely a big change and the reason why I did it was because I needed more room I needed to put corals in the tank that I really liked. I wanted just Acropora, even though there is a couple easy SPS in here. I just needed needed it to look and be something else. And that's kind of how we progress in the hobby. Plus Big Bertha here, she loves it. She had a ton of swimming room. And uh, yeah, There's a, there was definitely some tang aggression when I started removing the colonies. A little bit of territorial issues between Big Blue here and uh, Zay Zay, the uh, cell fin. But uh, yeah, that was about it. A little bit of aggression. Big Bertha's got more swimming room and um, She's still making me frags every day, though. It is what it is. But, uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. I'm done rambling. Hopefully you enjoyed the rest of the video where you guys can see the time lapse of me cutting down this rock structure. And uh, that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Peace.